what's up everybody welcome back to another video from exotic astrology again and today we will continue with our discussion on the fire of inspiration since it has been a long time since i have made any video on this and today's video is on the first person second person oh no no it's on the third person <laughs> who is the third person do you know <laughs> i will tell you who is that third person well basically what this video is it is about introducing the third person within any relationship oh my god the third person breaks the relationship right <laughs> generally if a boy and a girl is uh, both are together a man and a woman and then suddenly another person becomes more prominent in their life then there's high chance that the relationship doesn't sustain the relationship breaks apart it falls either maybe it's a man or it's a woman the third person so introduction of third person into any relationship can cause disaster if that person is of your same age i'm not saying of counselors here but i'm saying if one of them falls in love with the other person then that's it end of the relationship so that means whenever a third person will enter or even if there's a mutual friend i have seen in so many cases that people who have mutual friends within relationships they create a lot of havoc there they will say oh he said this she said that my god there's complete mayhem sometimes but what i'm trying to say here is there's peculiar there's one peculiar person <laughs> who if you introduce within your relationship as a third person your relationship will take leaps and bounds oh my god how is that possible <laughs> because how can a third person improve your relationship well you may say that maybe the father can give some guidance maybe the mother can give some guidance that is all okay i'm not saying that do not take guidance i i'm not talking of those people as third person here we can always take guidance from our parents from our seniors but when i'm telling here about the third person i mean the person who is beyond the limitations of time and space who is none other than god himself because when you introduce god into your relationship then the relationship becomes very beautiful we have the example of the pandavas in the mahabharat which is a very prominent epic in indian history that there were five great personalities who were known as the pandavas and they were extremely virtuous they were extremely righteous and they were greatly spiritually elevated personalities great they are known as the pandavas means the sons of the king pandu and eldest of them is yudhishthir maharaj himself yudhishthir is the most noble character in the mahabharat in his generation there is no second opinion on that the word yudhisthira means yudhi means a war and sthira means to be calm be stable so yudhisthira means one who is stable even when there is a war or a war like scenario or a war like situation not necessarily like a war but when there is complete mayhem and there is chaos in your life even then you maintain your cool so that is the meaning of the word yudhisthira and then his brother was bhima bhima was the next he was so powerful there was no body in equal to him he could break mountains it is said he was so powerful there was no physical entity that could, that could match his physical strength and then the third is the most illustrious the most heroic the most chivalrous of all the five he is lord krishna's best friend <laughs> and his name is none other than arjuna 
Arjuna means Arjuna has many meanings one of them is the color because he his color itself was like Arjun and Arjun means silver silver and that blue that blackish that that kind of a color that is Arjuna's body color so that is why he was named as Arjun and then he had two more brothers Nakul and Sahadev so these five were extraordinary personalities and then we have the example of Draupadi who was the wife of all the five Pandavas and we also have the example of their mother who was their mother their mother's name is Kunti of course Kunti was the mother of Yudhishthir, Bhim and Arjun and Nakul and Sahadev was the sons of Madri. Madri was the second wife of King Pandu. Therefore, these five were extremely talented. They were the best actually. There, there, there was nobody parallel to them. But the interesting thing about them is not that they were great. Great, I mean, they were obviously great on a mundane level. Mundane level means on a materialistic sense, they were very good looking, they were very intelligent, they were very righteous, they were very responsible, they were very loving, caring, very respectful. But this is not their primary trait. Their primary trait is they were highly elevated spiritually. They were so elevated that the Supreme Lord Krishna himself used to be staying with them. Like as if both are friends. <laughs> Arjuna and Krishna were best friends. So, he is the third person. And time and again, you see in the Mahabharata that there were so many conspiracies hatched directly or indirectly to kill the Pandavas since their childhood. My God! Bhima, when he was five years old, he was poisoned. But somehow, by God's grace, he came out even stronger. And then they were planned to be burnt in Varnavrat. But still they survived. <laughs> Somehow by God's grace. And then they had this fratricidal war of Kurukshetra, which also they won. My God. <laughs> How they won it. Only because Krishna was there with them. Of course they were unparalleled also in fighting. But... Also Krishna was there with them. That is why they won the war ultimately. Because wherever Krishna is, there is victory. Because if you read the Bhagavad Gita, in the last shloka of the Gita, Sanjaya, who is reporting the incidents of the war to Dhritarashtra, Sanjaya tells to Dhritarashtra that Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna Yatra Parthoda Nurdharaha Tatra Shri Vijaya Bhutir that wherever Krishna and Arjuna is there, there is victory. <laughs> he says four things are there. We will discuss on these four things some other day. But now I am saying there is victory. Wherever Krishna and Arjuna is there. And therefore, we see that in the life of Draupadi also, who was the wife of all the five, she was been utterly humiliated and she was tormented by Dushasan. Dushasan was the brother of Duryodhana who hatched all the controversies. And then she was brought to the assembly in front of everybody when she was undergoing her periods that time and she was in one single cloth. What a miserable state that is to come in front of somebody and her cloth was tainted with her menstrual blood and then at that situation she was invited uh, sorry she was summoned to come into the assembly and then Duryodhan on the advice of his best friend Karna <laughs> told his brother his younger brother the, just the next younger brother Dushasan that go and take away the cloth from this Draupadi. <laughs> and then Dushasan tried his best to 
uh, snatch her cloth but then she prayed to Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna provided her unlimited sari the cloth which she was wearing then got extended 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 and Dushasan was wondering my god <laughs> I don't know what's going on here so therefore there was another instance when Duryodhana had sent many sages into the forest where Pandavas were situated during their exile of 13 years and among them was the great Durvasa Muni. So Durvasa Muni was a very powerful sage. He was an incarnation of Lord Shiva himself and it is said whenever he would be displeased he would immediately curse somebody and Durvasa Muni's curse is like it is fated. You cannot do anything. It has to happen. There is no option that maybe it will happen maybe it will not there is no option it will happen it's guaranteed and what Duryodhan did was he persuaded Duvasmuni by pretending and saying that oh my brothers are alone in the forest it would be great if you could go and give them some blessing and then Duvasmuni said okay why not definitely I can go and bless them but the only problem was Durvas Muni had 60,000 disciples with him. Shishya. My God, 60,000. 600 is also maybe possible. Sometimes it happens in Indian gatherings. Or maybe even 6,000 also sometimes. But 60,000? It's impossible. Way, way, way beyond human comprehension. And if he would be displeased, he would immediately curse. And then he went along with all his disciples to see Yudhishthira in the forest. And then what happened? Durvas Muni told, we have to arrange food for all of us. We are going to take bath in the river and after we come, we want food. <laughs> and when he says he wants it, he really wants it and he means it. <laughs> and then what happens? Yudhishthir goes and tells to Draupadi, My dear Draupadi, what happened? How much food is remaining? And she says, No, everything is finished. Nothing is remaining. And, there, and we have to cook for 60,000 people now. And then Draupadi said, But that's impossible. It's impossible to the highest degree and in such a short span of time that we can cook so much food. It's not possible. And then they were taken aback because they knew the power of Durvas Muni. If he curses, everything will be burnt. And then Draupadi, she closed her eyes and she started praying to Krishna. And then suddenly Krishna appeared <laughs> from nowhere. And then Krishna appeared and then he told to Draupadi that are you sure all the food is extinguished? Have you eaten everything? Are you sure? And Draupadi said yes. I just took lunch now. Everything is finished. Everything is over. But then Krishna said go and bring that vessel where you had kept rice. And then Draupadi bought that vessel. And there what happened was there was one grain of rice remaining, one single grain. And then Krishna, he took that one grain of rice and he put it in his mouth and he ate it. And then there is a sloka in the scriptures, the Yashmin Tushtam Jagat Tushtam. That when God is satisfied, everybody is satisfied. And then what happened? The moment Krishna ate it, all the 60,000 disciples of Durvasa Muni, they felt as if they had just taken a very sumptuous heavy meal, suddenly out of nowhere. <laughs> out of nowhere, suddenly they were taking bath and they felt, oh my God, we have eaten so much. Now we are feeling sleepy. And then Durvasa Muni told, okay, I am also feeling like that. I don't know why. <laughs> but let's go and evade the Pandavas because if you go there and tell them that we are not coming then I don't know what this Bhima will do maybe he will 
kill all of us <laughs> because he's very angry because if he comes to know that for 60,000 people the lunch is going to be wasted they will be passed apart and you know the power of the Pandavas so better is we escape so they left and then nobody could harm the Pandavas ultimately they were victorious although they also had major calamities major losses but ultimately the end result is they were victorious so the trait of the Pandavas which is most fascinating is not that they were always on the side of positive positive means not that they were always on the upper hand or the gaining side so they had severe losses and at times they did mistakes also blunders also but the best part about them is whatever they did whenever they did wherever they did irrespective of that whenever lord krishna would say anything they would keep their ego aside and they would immediately do that that's the best part about them and there you see lord krishna is the third person <laughs> And that is why, even though five of them were married to Draupadi, their relationship never went underwent any friction. There was no envy between them. There was no quarrel. There was no hatred. What a harmonious relationship it is, my God. Because the third person was there in between. But in this material world, if you bring any other third person, to be very honest, to be brutally honest, even if it is your best friend or your mother or your father, your relationship can still go haywire. I have seen it. Even if it is your best friend or your mother or your father who you trust the most. Because then what happens? The moment you keep uh, bring them in between, suppose you and your spouse both are having some problem, you go to your mother and say that, Oh my God, this has happened, my mom, my dear mom, this has happened, my, my dear father. You can take guidance. But sometimes what can happen is they can enter too much into the relationship. And then the other person may feel, oh, your mother is saying too much, your father is telling too much. And then the relationship gets choked and one of them have to leave, which means the relationship falls apart. But in case of the Pandavas, we see that the relationship among the brothers, among five of them, there was not an iota of envy between them. And not only because of Draupadi, because of any other reason also. There was no envy. They were, they were the best all the time. Why was that? Because they had unflinching faith in the words of God and the words of the scriptures. That is why when their relationship was in turmoil, Turmoil in the sense they never had any turmoil, but there were there were two instances when the Pandavas had some level of minor quarrel. I would say it's not a big quarrel, but I will discuss on those two topics some other time. Only two instances are there in the entire Mahabharata where the Pandavas have some quarrel, very minute that, too. but even then Krishna protected them. There you see, <laughs> this third person will protect you always. And if it is any other third person, unless he is your guru, he or she, unless it is your guru, and guru means bona fide authorized guru, not just some guru here there. Only then your relationship can improve or sustain. And when it improves, First you sustain the relationship, then you improve it and then you move more higher into spiritual realms. Otherwise you will be stuck here and you will be wondering where everybody went. <laughs> I just stayed here and everybody left. And as I would end it by saying there are three kinds of people. I am not able to recall. Let me see how much I can recall. The first category, 
they make things happen the second category they watch wonders happening and the third category they wonder what happened <laughs> so if you do not include this third person within the relationship then you will go to the third category where you will just wonder my god what happened <laughs> it may not happen all the time but even if it doesn't happen you will still be stuck here so that is the message of this video the third person the third person has to be there and if it is anybody else other than him or the guru most likely the relationship will be doomed <laughs> all right that is it from my side thank you very much for watching till the end if you are new to the channel then subscribe to it and if you like this video then click the thumbs up and if you have any questions queries or comments then let me know in the comment section until next time wish you good luck with your third person bye bye see you